Welcome everyone to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. I am joined today by my boy Sam. And we are going over templates today. All sorts of types. All kinds of templates. So, when using Origin, sometimes you need a little bit beefier router. We can make templates for either following bits or in a couple other methods that we're going to show today, whether it be uh, bushings or, um, sorry, guide bushings or flush trim bits, but I'm going to throw it over to Sam, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's on Shaper Hub already. Yeah, so uh, for templates and things, um, a good place to start always is uh, Shaper Hub. So we'll take a look here. Um, just type in hub.shapertools.com. There we go. You can see my screen. That's what you're presented with at the outset. Uh, by the way, there's the Sys1 organization. If you want to uh, customize your foam, there's a bunch of uh, variations for how people have done that. Um, check that out. Uh, and then we get back into searching for specific type stuff for fixtures and templates. So down here, there's one called fixtures and jigs. So that's uh, a an area you can start looking. Um, so start handing these to Jake. And We'll look through these. So you can see this is members of the community, just like yourself. They've uh, been considerate enough to upload projects that you can then use for whatever fixtures or uh, things you may want to make. So I think those are the Brian's, Brian J's uh, little simple knob kit. So uh, they call it in special effects or in you know movie making, they call it kit bashing. So you take components from various other models and combine them into something unique. So don't treat all of Shaper Hub as just like, okay, this is a complete project, each project uh, being like a complete um, thing you may want to make. Consider going in there and looking for the various parts, various techniques, and find ways to reuse them. So uh, we'll cut back to my screen here. We've got the, uh, the corner rounding. There's one by Lee. So it's a bunch of like all the different uh, dimensions or you know, metric and uh, imperial radiuses and they're all labeled with a little bit of uh, text and everything there. So you can get to work. Uh, sure, you could do this with origin as well um, with just a quick grid and uh, drop down a, a, a circle there. You can actually radius corners or a, uh, a rectangle with radius corners. Uh, you can do these things on Origin, and we're totally all about that. You know, if you can do something on Origin with Untool CAD, uh, that's epic. But there's also times and situations where you might, might want to set up a workflow where uh, you use a different tool. Your Origin may be busy elsewhere, so you want to use just a passive tool. Um, so, yeah, we'll work you through some of the options there and some of the various techniques. So, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for... Oh, actually, there's another couple here. We'll type that in again and do another search. Uh, there was another project in here that had uh, all sorts of crazy little... Uh, this one here was pretty cool. Yeah, so Joseph's got one. Uh, and on the surface it looks like, okay, pretty simple, but then you dig under the hood and look at all the different things that are in here. Um, just a side note, you can actually click on these now and get a preview of exactly what it is you're looking at there. So these are just little squares uh, and things that help you, you know, fixture and work hold other objects. Um, so yeah, be sure to dig into some of these projects and, and see all the various uh, shapes and whatnot that are that are there waiting for you to use elsewhere on other projects. Um, so yeah, take a look at that. Um, you can of course download them all uh, and bring them into a project like um, Illustrator. That's a that's a perfectly good option. Or you could just adapt them on tool. Often we you know drop a, a circle to put a hole in a specific location, that sort of thing. Uh, plenty of options there. And then there's one more I want to draw your attention to, which is one I made. I'm not just being a narcissist, um, <laughs> but uh, this one's pretty handy if you've got the workstation. So we know a lot of you are buying the workstation, and uh, this has some interesting little features here. So to get the most out of it, um, so we've got the clamping face here. So uh, if we look at this, it's got a lot of details there that if you were to com create a fixture that you wanted to index on these little pins, uh, this the, the project here has, has a file with all of this laid out. So we'll cut back to that goose and quickly have a look. 
So you can see here, there's all the key holes you need, and then there's the uh, the slots or the channels in the actual clamping face. So this way, you can design your fixtures to uh, you know either align to the top or uh, avoid uh, covering over geometry that you may want to leave exposed, or maybe you need a little hole to be able to get to that so that you can take things on and off. Uh, hopefully, you can see my mouse there. Yes, good. Um, yeah, and then there's also the advantage of things like, I mean, this one seems a little odd on first look, but this is actually, uh, do you have one of the clamps there, Jake? Right oh, there. I got one right there. So uh, you can see on my, oh, you saw on the screen the, the, the clamp. You can actually design for, you know, how far can that actually reach? So those, uh, the two lines uh, on that let you just mock things up. Uh, we'll go back to my screen, Goose. Uh, let you just mock things up and know exactly like where the center of this is, where the clamping pressure will be, and where you know it won't um, won't collide with anything else. So yeah, once again, it's just like digging into the details. Uh, and then down the bottom, we've got the the whole pattern of the underside of the workstation. So this might be for either uh, details for stowing it or for mounting it to the underside of a bench uh, or something else. So there's one that shows the entire body and then the uh, the next one is kind of clipped at the front edge. One of the community asked if we could do this uh, so that he could align it, you know, grid to the front edge of his bench and then the hole pattern for his mounting holes, which are these ones here, um, or optionally these ones out here if you want, uh, so that they would align perfectly and he wouldn't have any gap between the uh, clamping face and the uh, the bench itself or the sorry yeah the the other detail there um so yeah dig into this it's a good starting point if you're developing uh fixtures on the workstation um i'll show you one here like this was one i made just for uh i may have shown this one before actually um it's got the indexing pins and then the screw down points and uh, that enables it to just instantly be uh, vertical and you, know, you can put any sized uh, dowel in here and then by probing these edges uh, at the top you can then uh, center geometry on these uh, for should you want to do a tenon or a uh, some other detail and then you know you can obviously adapt that uh, much like a V-block for sort of sanded uh, milling machines and uh, bench um, bench drills. Um, yeah, so that's the the kit. It's called uh, Shaper Workstation Fixture Creation Kit. That's too many words, isn't it? But uh, <laughs> that's that's what it does. So dig in there as a starting point. It's a great way to. Uh, kick off fixtures that actually attach to the workstation and enable you to uh, achieve various operations there. We're next going to move on to uh, the idea of a bushing template. So actually we've got some slides. We'll just duck back to them quickly and make sure we didn't miss anything, Goose. Um, so we'll skip through these ones. I think we've covered all this. Uh, we won't bore you with too many slides. Um, that's just Shaper Hub. That's just Fixture Creation Kit. Now we're getting into the interesting part. So Jake's going to be performing some cuts here and walking us through uh, how to use Origin to take a standard piece of geometry that um, you've designed for cutting with Origin and then maybe you want to use a uh, bushing, a uh, copying ring or a bushing uh, that you'd attach to a router. Uh, this enables you to use like regular cutters. You don't need any little bearings on them. Actually, we'll just quickly bring these two down to my little screen down here. So yeah, we've got a uh, flush cutting bit and a pattern bit. So uh, these are, you know, one's a half inch, one's a quarter inch. But these are two different approaches. And actually, Jake will bring in the next one. And uh, This terrifying monster. <laughs> So that one's you wouldn't use that obviously in origin uh the the shank's too big and it's it's more set up for a bench router but uh those are the one of the options for using templates and they uh, usually are designed to enable you to cut at the exact same dimension uh as the pattern or template you've made um and you know there's obviously the ones designed to roll the bearing on the the bottom uh the flush trim bit 
So you would uh, push through the material uh, that you intend to cut and run along the side of the stock uh, and it will trim. Often they were sort of designed for veneer and that sort of thing, but people use them for all, all sorts of stuff. So, uh, and the other one is the opposite. You have the pattern on the top and so that will ride against the pattern and cut the material below. And you'll notice the, the cutting flutes align exactly with the bearing so you get the same dimension when you cut it out. The only thing to consider is you know the, the diameter of the bearing itself is going to limit the detail you can cut. So uh, more acute angles it won't be able to get into the tight corners. Um, so that's, that's just one thing to keep note of there. Um, Jake's going to walk you through uh, the bearing uh, sorry, the copying ring approach now uh, okay. with Origin. So we should probably show the, uh, the project we intend to do there. Yes, and also what exactly is a copying bearing or bushing rather. Uh, what's nice about these bushings is we know the exact dimension of them so we can actually use Origin's on, uh, onboard calculator to just input the, that information in there. So when we make our template, we're sizing it accurately undersized so that when we move to our thicker material maybe uh, again we're gonna be making a tabletop today so if we're using if we're cutting into inch and a half or some heavy-duty uh, hardwood top that's where that's why we're talking about bringing in a beefier router like this for this kind of operation so so we'll jump to the next slide here so you can see here the idea of how this one's going to work uh, hopefully that reads clearly to you the uh, we have the template and then this little bushing that you saw installed in the router um, and that's got an outside diameter so the outside diameter is the key thing that is going to ride against the uh, the pattern itself um, so we'll go back to that uh, image so you can see the bushing there called out and the template that it rides against and then the cutter and what we need to measure is that offset between the cutter and the template so that's where uh, actual offsets on origin come in super handy because we don't need to do all this math to get this dead right and uh, calculate it in advance. We can just adapt right on tool. So uh, we'll take a look at the, the next slide after that and Jake will walk you through the processes. <laughs> okay, so here is our little equation for what we're wor working with today and the bearing that I have set up on, on our router. Uh, but essentially I'm going to input that as you see it into my origin it's going to do the math for me so I've already scanned in my workspace here I am making this template out of MDF um, and I am going to place the file so again the shape we're cutting the shape intentionally undersized because this is our template so we have kind of a uh, lima bean shape so this is the full size shape at the moment. So this is the final geometry you intend to cut. And we're going to show how to take that. Yeah, yeah it's basically if you were to make this uh, kidney shaped table, um, we're going to do a little prototype version of it. So it's smaller, obviously. But the idea is, let's say we have the geometry we want to cut. How do we then adapt that and turn it into a template that will work with a uh, copying ring? And how we do that is with offsets. So right now you can see I'm cutting directly up to the line, but let's go ahead and go into that offsets tab and start putting in that information. So we have the, uh, the diameter of our bushing, which is 51 64ths. And you can just read this off the bushing data itself. So this is not stuff you have to remember. Um, yeah, so you might be able to see it there. You know, this is all called out here. So 51 64ths. Cool. Um, and the cool thing is origin, uh, you can enter it in any format you want just follow along with Jake here. Yeah. So putting in that fraction, I'm going to hit the equal sign. It's going to give me the decimal. Then we are going to minus the diameter of our cutter, which is 0.5. Again, hitting that equal sign. And then we're going to divide the whole thing by 2, because we really care about the radius. Boom. Now the only thing I'm going to add to this is I am going to turn it to a negative because you can see it stepped it farther away from our final design line and we actually want to cut into it so hit that negative and that brings us into it cool so the cool thing is we didn't need to remember some 
crazy equation and do all the math ourselves on the back of a uh, notepad. Uh, and this now gets us just perfectly offset the whole way around that line. Um, and this can accommodate you know, any diameter cutter and any diameter uh, bushing. So if you're stuck with a specific cutter or a specific bushing, um, rather than having to do any weird workarounds, you can just run this through Origin and be good to go. Cool. Should we go ahead and do a pass on this? Yeah. So if you can kill Jake, you might. There we go. Hopefully you can hear me. So, uh, yeah, Jake's just cutting this as you ordinarily would. Uh, he's following the line. So this, the cool thing now is he's stepped in by, I think it's like 0.14 inches. Uh, beyond where he would be if he was cutting this at the exact dimension he finally wanted. Uh, so you obviously want to make a note on this, like, hey, this is my uh, template designed for X copying ring and uh, X cutter, because those two values are now uh, tied. Um, often it turns out you know, it's going to be an eighth of an inch offset or something like that, um, but this just enables you to accommodate anything. So then uh, it's just a matter of cutting around this. Uh, it's, this one's actually quite thick. It's like three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll do like uh, two or three passes to get down to the, uh, the final dimension. Ones. And you notice we've scaled this way down. I consider being, a, uh, I think the, the, the table is like 48 inches across. Um, this is just a tiny little version, just to get the idea across so we're not cutting for three days here while you're all watching. Uh, by the way, we're going to do Q&A at the end, so uh, if there's any questions about any of this as we go, be sure to, uh, be sure to uh, ask them in the chat. Um, also, Ted's got a lot of links to various things we mentioned, so he'll be filling you in with all the details as we go. A little bit of cooking show action there. Uh, I already cut this one out, but that is the undersized template with a, a proper finishing pass. and. When we're moving to our, our actual material, I'm gonna rough it out on the bandsaw. Again, this is kind of, the idea is doing this in batched work or small production work. So I have a bunch of these uh, table blanks and they're all roughed out. They're ready for their final profile. So it's just a little bit bigger um, than, than the template itself. And I'm just using some double-sided tape to hold it all down. which is uh, alarmingly good over a larger area, it gets really strong. So you don't need to worry about that moving. Yeah. Um, so long as you, yeah, as Jake's done here, keep it dusted, keep it clean, and uh, that's not going anywhere. Did you do both, by the way? Debu. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. All right. And if you're wondering where we get our double-sided tape, we get it on our website. We sell the stuff that we use, and we can't uh, recommend it enough. So for that, uh, just go to the accessories store, um, which is linked at the top. If you can switch to my screen, Goose, yeah, and so you'll see it up here. Um, accessories store, and then we got our tape, collets, cutters, a workstation, hats. Very nice. Radio, back to Jake. All right. So what we got here is sort of a sandwich with a uh, bottom is the spoil board. Then there's the element we're cutting. This would usually be hardwood, um, but in this case, we're just going to quickly do some MDF. Then we got the template that we just made uh, with our offset. And the goal here would be if we're going to make 15 of them, uh, how would we go about that? So. Uh, we can see now we've got a, a big beefy router and we're going to try and take advantage of its power to, to move a lot of material. Yep. I should already have my depth set. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I better talk over this one. It's uh, 
it's a lot louder but uh yeah so now you'll be able to see the oh you might not be able to make it out but basically what's happening now is the bushing is touching the edge of the uh yeah the bushing is touching the edge of the template and then that offset is going to get them uh, 0.148 inches of an offset there uh, and that will bring us back to the final dimension that was in our in our file uh, so this is a really good way of uh you know taking advantage of a, of a much more powerful router uh, cut for a lot more material a lot more quickly if you're doing a you know, large volume of these um, so you're taking advantage of the origins precision and it's uh, a consistent uh, ability to repeat that same precise cut and then uh, taking advantage of the horsepower of this machine for, for this task so uh, yeah it's a, it's a really really great way of uh, making the most of, of what tools you have It's a great way to make some dust. All right. So you can see it has that that dimension that is oversized. This bottom one is now exactly what we designed for with that offset of 0.148. So that's yeah. Now that's a quick way to turn around projects, and uh, hopefully, seeing the the ability to take advantage of Origin's offset feature um, makes a lot of sense there. So uh, yeah, interested to see how you guys all use that type of technique. Sorted. Right. Sorted. Right. Next up, I'll let uh, Jake prep things a little bit. Um, we're going to go to. We, need, we have a slide for this, yeah. We'll go to a slide and have a quick look at uh, what's coming up next. Basically, um, I just uploaded a uh, project to Shaper Hub, which is basically this little trivet. Um, and that's, uh, that's an interesting one in that it involves cutting from the top and the bottom. Uh, and so for the first pass, we can do it all the way you traditionally would. Cutting from the top, you cut all the internal detail. Uh, and then you come through and cut the perimeter as you ordinarily would with origin. Then the challenge is we need to keep track of the orientation of this, flip it over, and cut the backside. So uh, maybe we'll show this other little screen here and see if we can see that more clearly. Yes, yeah, so you'll see the sort of uh, gaps in the way it all matches front to back, or you know, rotates front to back. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut into MDF uh, with the same file that we intend to use for cutting the uh, slots. It includes the geometry for the perimeter as well. So we're going to use that perimeter uh, and turn it into an inside cut. So then we can quickly cut into the MDF. And once we place this inside there with a little bit of uh, on the fly dog bones, uh, we'll then be able to know it's perfectly aligned front to back. And we can then go and cut the cut the slots from the other side. So it's just half depth for each one, and uh, we're good to go. So I think Jake's actually cut the backside already. Yes. Um, so we'll have a quick look at that. So yeah, you'll see. Actually, does above work, Goose? Yeah. So he's cut the back, but we need to now flip this and cut the inside. He's also marked. You may not be able to see that there, but he's marked the the bottom edge so that we know that we flip it exactly like that. Uh, if we flip it any other way, uh, the, <laughs> the pattern on the back won't align properly and it'll uh, probably break. Uh, it's actually quite stable like this, but yeah, if you uh, mess up your orientation during the flipping process, it's anyone's guess what you're going to get. So uh, yeah, the, the project comes with just like a side A and a side B. Uh, so we've cut the side A and now he's going to lay up side B and uh, cut a little hexagon in there uh, to accommodate this. Usual rules apply, roughing passes, finishing pass, and then uh, he'll work up and figure out a, the exact offset he wants to get the friction fit to hold it in place. We're still going to add double-sided tape to keep this in place when we do the second side cut, but uh, yeah. The friction should be just near enough. Yeah. All right. As always, always overlap your scan paths. Imagine mowing the lawn or spray painting, basically giving every domino an opportunity to be 
smack dab in the middle of Origins scan viewport. And bringing in my trivet. All right, so I've already cut side A, so I'm going to bring in side B. Again, I'm just placing that there. And the trick is changing that from an oh, look at that weird offset from an outside now to an inside. And of course, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a roughing pass. So I'm going to run through this, cut out that center part, and then we will throw some. Uh, on the fly dog bones in there. So Jake's off to the races. Uh, that'll be three passes, but it will actually be pretty quick because it's NDF. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to cut. Um, hopefully you can all hear me pretty well. Um, so currently doing the uh, currently doing the roughing pass there. I think Jake commonly does a 0.02 inch uh, roughing offset. That's all to taste. You can uh, you can call the shots and operate however you like. I'm usually 0.01. Uh, it's a balancing act between how aggressively you want to move material. Jake's pretty good at uh, keeping things moving, and this is not an ultra critical cut, right? Uh, it's it's not something we're going to look at long term, uh, but it just needs to accommodate our uh, and, and hold our item in place for the, for the duration that we may be cutting it. Um, so it, it, you can afford to really, really crank on it. Um, so he's on his second pass now, zipping along um, the straights. Uh, so long as you're not, you know, drifting side to side aggressively, uh, you can get pretty clean, smooth straight lines on a uh, straight cut. And then even if you do drift a little, that 0.02 offset enables you to come back and uh, strip away any any deviation uh, that may have crept in from going too fast. Um, the only downside to doing a larger offset is uh, your final pass is then a loaded pass, meaning that there's, uh, there's force on your cutter, and it could, you know, uh, every time there's a load on a cutter, it deflects a little, you know, everything, uh, cut quality can deteriorate a little bit. Uh, that's why I prefer a smaller offset, but uh, once again, all the pace, and MBF is pretty forgiving, so uh, we're good to go here. Now, uh, the reason we were saying there's a need to do dog bones on the fly, uh, because we've just adjusted or adapted a file that was designed to be cut as a positive, uh, in each of these sharp corners, um, maybe we can cut away to... Actually, we'll, we'll look at my screen if you want, uh, Goose. So we're... Uh, so now we're looking at the actual file that's being cut. This is the A side, and then this is the B side. So uh, in each of these sharp corners, our little rounded cut is not going to be going to be able to make it all the way to the corner. So uh, the problem there is we won't be able to press this in unless we go in and chisel it or something. So uh, Jake's just going to come around at the end and do like a 0.03 or something of the like uh, plunge in each corner. So if you just hover uh, with your cutter just outside the corner uh, and hold it in place, and plunge and retract, you can actually remove all that material uh, that the circular cutter wasn't able to get to. All right, should we make the uh, make the circles? Yeah. Or do the offset? Um, all right, have you done a... So yeah, the one other thing is, uh, by default, we're line to line here. So that's going to be like an interference fit. So uh, we may have to come back and revisit the uh, the final tolerance around the edge uh, so that there's uh, no friction. Actually, you don't even need to do that, Jake. You can... Uh, Are you talking about the offset method? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ah. uh, circle up. Yeah. Well, I thought it'd be worth showing both options. That's a good point. Yeah, no, show them that one, and then we'll do the others the other way. Either creating a circle that is the size of your uh, the diameter of your cutter, in this case, 0.25, and dropping it neatly right there over the corner, or... In this case, against we don't really care how it looks. We're just using that negative offset, but more more of an extreme negative offset to bump it into. Let's do like a negative 0.03. See how that looks, and you can see my cut path is now encompassing all of that corner. So I'm going to go ahead and just plunge and retract on all these corners and keep going. So just 
pay attention to the to Jake's technique here. Like he's right at that uh, kind of apex of that corner and he holds very still. Uh, so that means the closest point to origin is the actual point that that corner turns. So there's no reason for origin to attempt to move forward and it's not going to go backwards. Uh, so if you're, if you're careful, you can just plunge and retract and you know you're always going to end up plunging and retracting at exactly that corner. And you'll see the little uh, cut channel guy, the little gray area, is showing the material that's going to re be removed. So you can experiment with your, because different cutters will need a different offset. Uh, you can experiment with your uh, offset value. I think you uh, did a 0.03 negative offset, something like that, uh, to make sure it goes beyond the green line, which that one's the final dimension of your uh, original jump. So you know that the hexagon you're going to drop in there uh, is going to come to the green. Sorry, the hexagon you're going to drop in there is going to uh, come to that green line. So if there's any material left interfering with that, uh, you won't be able to fit it in. But now, um, you might be able to see the little divots in each corner there. Uh, maybe, yeah, a little bit hard to see, but uh, basically in each corner now there's a little uh, piece of material milled out. And that means we'll be able to drop uh, trivet in the other way around. All right, critical point. When I cut side A, I actually mark where my bottom is because that is how I'm going to flip it. I'm going to keep that bottom facing me. I've also put a little arrow here, and that's what's going to help the uh, patterns align. Double check our fit. Oh, yeah. You gonna go with that, or take a little more off? I could take a little more off. I mean, that is like a true. Don't be a don't be a hero, Jake. So tempting. <laughs> uh, with uh, like soft MDF and uh, also you know uh, softer woods, uh, you could obviously force it in there, but uh, that's not what we're really looking for, right? And with Origin, we can come back and you know deal with the exact same geometry uh, and change it by a thousandth of an inch if we want. So. Uh, you can get exactly you can get exactly the friction you want so in this case we don't want a huge amount of friction we just want to know that this is accurately aligned and we can get it in and out should we want um, on that note uh, it can be worthwhile adding things like uh, a little notch like a, a circle on one edge so that you can get something under and pop your uh, component out uh, without having to sort of disassemble everything and get your uh, double sided tape off the whole panel um, lots of stuff like that is, is a walk in the park with Origin because you're already set up. Just jump back to the design menu. So, uh, Got to stay a uh, decent distance away so you can hear me, but pretend I'm saying things over here. Uh, yeah, so just uh, drop into design menu, add the extra details you want, and you can uh, continue going. All right. So can you share what the final offset was that you went with there? I went with a negative 0 0.006. Right here. Six thou. Thank you, sir. So he's careful to keep his uh, little, little note uh, aligned with the bottom there. And uh, that's going to... That's in there. <laughs> Do you want to press it in? I mean, I was going to put some double-sided tape, but I actually don't. No, you don't need to. I don't need it. If that you, uh, yeah, keep the friction adequate, uh, you don't need to add tape underneath it to stop it sliding around. So uh, the one thing we did here was uh, plan around having the stock the same thickness as the MDF. Obviously, that helps a lot uh, just for the stability of any router base, but uh, also to have the tape on the same plane as the surface you're cutting. So now Jake's going through and he's going to, oh no, the, the, the cool thing here is the file he placed uh, was the B side and uh, flipping it means that all of the geometry is already aligned and uh, perfectly ready to go. So yeah, off to the races. Now I can just lay into all these. One thing I'd like to point out, so they, w if you're using a quarter inch cutter, you can see you have to use a 0.01 offset. You can't do a 0.02 because it, the slots are sized essentially for a 0.01 rough offset. Oops. 
So should while well, you're talking about that, uh, the the so what Origin is doing is it's creating toolpaths based on where that cutter can get. So the moment you see uh, the green uh, geometry you wish to cut, but no toolpath um, turning up. So at the moment you see the toolpath, the dotted line, and the uh, the grey cut channel identified there, and you see it's very slim that line. So that's showing you the cutter will be able to zip straight down the middle of it and kind of no more. There's no play. When Jake went to 0 0.02, it effectively kind of collapsed those uh, toolpaths on themselves. Like it, it can't, it literally can't fit in that gap anymore with that offset. So it doesn't display a cut path. So if you ever see that, uh, the place to look is uh, offsets is one thing, and cut di diameter is another thing. So if he said he had a half inch cutter there, and the slot is a quarter inch slot, it's never going to create a toolpath to cut in there because it can't fit. So. Sorry, back to you. No worries. Uh, so another point for speed and efficiency's sake on this particular project, I'm going to do my roughing pass with this offset. I'm going to just do one pass on all of these lines. Then I'm going to come back, because it's essentially an oval, but a very slim oval. Um, then on my finish pass, that's when I'll go all the way around uh, each of these shapes when I'm cutting it to a zero offset. But for again, for efficiency's sake, I'm just using one pass to clear this material out. Should I go through and do them? Yeah, do a couple do of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's cool here is we're gonna... What's cool here is we're going down to uh, half the depth of the material. And as we go, we're gonna start to reveal the slots on the other side. So uh, it's, it's pretty fun to go down to the right depth. Um, so I think he's starting off at a quarter inch. I oh, know he's doing uh, full depth with this one. Uh, and then you just tune that and uh, check to make sure you're actually uh, deep enough to expose those uh, the cut channels on the other side. And then uh, once you're happy with that, the cool thing about this is because it's pretty close to a quarter inch wide, that single path down the middle uh, effectively leaves you with just the roughing material on either side. So then you don't have to spend, you know, as Jake just described, you don't have to just spend all that time uh, cutting both ways uh, on the first pass because there's only sort of uh, 0 0.01 uh, of material on either side. So that's effectively your finished pass. So uh, he'll come back and take care of that once he's uh, happy with the roughing pass. Um, but this is actually quite a quick project. It uh, doesn't take super long. Uh, but we won't we won't cut the whole thing. We'll just uh, give you a, a quick look at how it works. Yeah, it's funny because because uh, it's not climb cutting. You can uh, get more efficient by starting at one end, completing it, and then jump across to the next one and go in the opposite direction. Uh, but yeah, that's some uh, nice little slots, and I'm assuming he can see through to the bottom. So. Now I'm going to come back in and set that offset to zero and go all the way around. Clean up those edges. Sorry, it's a bit of a brutal uh, environment for the uh, microphones, but yeah, he's, uh, he's now doing his finishing pass. It is tempting to go super fast here because uh, it's unloaded, but realistically the goal is just to, uh, to cut smoothly. Uh, obviously, once again, on the straights, you can move a little faster. Uh, but be cautious when you're rounding corners, that sort of thing. Uh, that's where you want to really take the time and get it right uh, without lingering and letting the cutter heat up and start to deteriorate. So uh, you can see here, you know, we, we can crank through this pretty quick. So it's, uh, it's a good little, I don't know, probably take you 25 minutes uh, to do the whole thing from start to finish. But uh, yeah, it's a fun little little project that holds up well. Uh, you will be able to scale it up, uh, but not so much down, um, because the or unless you go to a smaller cutter, the uh, you'd have to go to like an eighth inch cutter then uh, to cut any smaller than this, uh, just because it, the cutter once again won't fit in those slots. But uh, you can scale that up a reasonable amount. Uh, it's a good little thing to just keep pots uh, keep pots from damaging surfaces. But yeah, we won't go through the whole thing. You can see the uh, end product. Um, you can see those slots coming together nicely there. It's so satisfying to see that. Say that again, your mic was off. Oh, I said it's just so satisfying to see it, the uh, 
the other side going the other direction through it's very very cool and also very meditative cut just back and forth just what could possibly go forth. wrong exactly one corner and if you're feeling bold um okay so uh now we're going to jump through to some slides uh of a project this is actually uh, a video that will be coming down the line later uh it's one of our customers you will have seen him in other videos simon lamison so uh he is uh, normal limited uh ted will be able to link out to his uh instagram and his web page and we're going to look at one of his projects and how he's utilized uh templates once again, I should repeat, you know, if, if you were making a modest number of these, uh, you may not even want to use templates for a lot of this. Um, so you can see, hopefully, uh, it's clear the little, um, like, bedside table he's designed here in CAD. Uh, interestingly, like, the, the, you know, obviously it's a beautiful, elegant design, but uh, while I was, uh, we were there filming him, the, the process of working through the fabrication techniques and the uh, fixturing, you know, safety, consistently being able to re-index uh, and, and not be sort of adding unnecessary holes or things that needed to be fixed later to the to the pieces was uh, that was where all the the heavy thinking was happening is uh, the the fabrication thinking so um, yeah no, it's uh, it's an interesting interesting project and we'll just step through some slides here quickly before we get into Q&A so uh, yeah start loading up your Q&A questions and we'll walk through this and uh, have a look at various various ideas and things that might be interesting. So the reason why uh, Simon got into the template approach for this, um, you'll see a lot of the details could have been cut directly with Origin, but he was wanting to like scale his production. Uh, I think he was doing like six or ten or something this day, but with an idea of like how how would you manufacture these uh, rapidly and a whole bunch of them. So just step back one one slide, sorry Goose. Uh, you can see here, these, these are the actual templates that we arrived on, or he arrived on, uh, for uh, performing all these operations. And there's some kind of pretty cool smart little features in them that are worth sharing and taking a look at. Uh, and you'll get an opportunity to really uh, dwell on them a little more when the video comes out. But just quickly now, we'll just go through them and uh, take a look. So uh, next one. So the first one is, you know, Origin's great for cutting a circle of any arbitrary dimension you like uh, without, you know, the, the sort of guesswork and sanding and uh, crossed fingers that goes with the sort of bandsaw uh, approach. So with that, he was able to quickly attach it to this uh, pretty beefy oak stock and then uh, trace the circle. And then uh, that, that was taken to the bandsaw for an initial rough pass. And then this is one of those pattern bits we were talking about. Uh, it's actually got a bearing on the top and the bottom. A little bit more like uh, here's a one of these types. Uh, these occasionally have bearings on the top. Uh, I think that one actually had like um, indexed carbide uh, sort of helix cutting going on. This is one by Whiteside, which is a uh, similar, similar idea. And yeah, I know there's one with a bearing on the top. So that means you can use them in a bench router. Uh, with the, the pattern on the top or the bottom, uh, however you like. But uh, yeah, back to the slide. That means the, the first pass, just to get the final circular form dialed in, uh, was pretty straightforward. You'll notice the little uh, holes for the screws, they were placed so that the mortises uh, for the vertical elements would actually cover them up at the end. So they were used uh, to repeat alignment of various features or uh, various fixtures or templates uh, but then yeah it was all, all those little details were placed in a place that they'd get sort of erased by a later operation so that's all pretty easy at this stage then we'll move forward to the next one um, and then the stock itself became kind of a, uh, a template for the next operation so that was using a cutter like this one here now I should make a note uh, a cutter with a following bearing like this is uh, not to be used with Origin. Like we need to use cutters uh, that don't limit the direction it can move. The other thing is, I suspect this is bigger than uh, one inch across, so you would not use this in Origin either. His was much bigger than that, uh, but you'll see how he was able to uh, perform his rounding over operations. Um, they're done in a couple of passes. I think this is the first pass here before he brings it all the way up to halfway. Worth noting is, uh, I've fallen victim to this before, and I'm sure a lot of people have. Uh, with those rounding cutters, uh, if you want something that's like, uh, sorry, we'll get back here, uh, radius the whole way around, 
the moment you've cut half of it to the correct radius, you can no longer get the bearing to ride on that same point at the very tip. Uh, it often ends up sort of falling into the material and getting you a misaligned uh, outcome. I hope that's obvious. I should have probably made a uh, little diagram of that. But uh, yeah, the second half of a roundover operation, if it's a full sort of 180 degree round, uh, needs a little extra thinking to make sure you uh, you can perform it accurately. So we'll, we'll look at how we approach that uh, back in the slides. Um, but yeah, first we'll look at this. This is the next template. Um, and you'll notice he's got some holes there for uh, rapidly aligning. And then those square holes are actually pretty interesting. They've got little notches. They're designed for the uh, the Festool Domino. So this whole thing's held together with uh, with dominoes. Maybe, would you better go and grab the domino, Jake? Of course. Um, and you know, once again, these are operations that could be totally performed with Origin. Uh, this just happens to be the way Simon wanted to pursue this, and uh, it worked out great. So he uh, set up those little squares so that the you know top left corner of the domino in its most sort of collapsed position uh, aligns right in those hard edges. Uh, so then he was able to just, um, we'll go to the next slide. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so he, we, he made a little custom uh, peg or, you know, kind of puck that uh, aligns with one of the mortise holes. So then he was able to know that the orientation of this template relative to a circle uh, was correct every time. That's one of those things that, you know, it's doing that stuff by eye. Uh, you you notice it once you're done. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll cut to this one. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. So that's the, that's the domino. It's kind of like a... Uh, a biscuit jointing thing, but uh, it actually has a little. This one may not have one in it. Um, you might be able to see the. Uh, I'll do it this way. The cutter kind of uh, pops out there, oscillates to a very specific depth, and uh, you install a little. Uh, they call it a domino, which is you know much stronger. Uh, but it's great for this fine furniture sort of stuff where you don't have, if you don't want a tenon to come all the way through, often people reach for the, the domino to get you really strong and really quick and efficient um, kind of installation of those details. So uh, yeah, we'll go back to the slides and take a look at the next step. So yeah, that, that meant he was oriented correctly every time and then he was able to just quickly drop the domino in there, push it into the same corner every time and get his dominoes aligned exactly where he wanted them. Um, so that's pretty cool. The next step was, uh, as I described previously, the, the second phase of that roundover. So that was where uh, it was a matter of taking, much like Jake did with, the, um, with that trivet, uh, taking files that he'd designed for the original circle and adapting them uh, kind of on the fly to this uh, fixture for the, the bench router. So um, we'll cut back to the slides again and look at how he went about that. So that's just so that the bearing doesn't sort of uh, fall into the material and, and uh, mess everything up. Uh, it also keeps things safe, you know, literally uh, there's a lot of forces or potential for forces if a grab happens or something on a big machine like this. Uh, so having that circle running the whole way around the back there meant things were a lot more stable and reliable. So we'll go to the next slide. Um, so you can see, yeah, just quick, quick operations, uh, the same circle, cut through some thicker MB MDF, and uh, he, he had something set up that um, held his work in place. So we'll go to the next one. And then a quick test. Uh, you know, the, the, the key thing here is like the repeatability of origin. Like he was able to cut the positive circle uh, on a couple of different templates and then this negative one. And you know, they're always gonna align if, you, uh, if you're a careful, smooth operator. Um, so that was just a quick test before he kicked it off. And uh, we'll go through to that. There's the ultimate outcome of uh, once he's cut it through that with the little holes for the dominoes and the uh, circular mortises, which we'll look at again, uh, or not sort of again in the next slide. Um, so yeah, that's that's the little uh, mortise kind of shoulder, sorry, the tenon shoulder detail he did there uh, with a little um, fixture that was made on tool just on the day. Uh, so it was just a rectangle and if you start with a grid, you can then place a circle right on the edge of that rectangle of whatever di diameter you want. And the rectangle depth means you know it's the center of that is exactly, you know, X inches from the leading edge of your uh, clamping face. 
So that enables you to, to precisely place your, uh, your little shoulder geometry and then uh, mess around with exactly the friction fit you want. So uh, we'll then get to the fit up. So it all comes together nicely, everything's aligned, vertical, there's no weird warps or twists or misalignments, and uh, then we got the last frame of that. It looks like uh, it belongs in a magazine or something. So uh, then you profit, right? So that's the idea with that. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. See you next time.